Hey guys, this is God of Politics. Before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. I'll have both of those linked down in the description. But today's election prediction is going to be the best case scenario for the Democrats in the Senate. Yesterday I did the best case scenario for the Republicans in the Senate. You should check that out. I'll have it in the cards and linked down in the description. But today we're going to do the opposite, the best case scenario that the Democrats could have in the 2020 election. Obviously this is a year where there's a number of high-profile Senate races from across the country, from Arizona to Maine to Michigan to North Carolina in completely different areas of the country all have competitive Senate races. And if these all go the Democrats' way, they could be looking at something that's very favorable to them, just like it could be very favorable to Republicans if they had the best case scenario that I did yesterday. But first, I'm going to be filling out the safe seats for the Republicans, and those will be Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Alaska, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, which could be likely, actually. And the best case scenario actually would be likely Tennessee, West Virginia. And that's going to be all of the safe states for the Republicans in a best case scenario for the Democrats. And it puts the Republicans at 40 safe seats. And then for the Democrats, they would have the seats of Oregon with Jeff Merkley. New Mexico, the open seat would still be by a safe margin. Illinois, Virginia with Mark Warner. Delaware, New Jersey, obviously Virginia, has been trending blue for a while now. Mark Warner is pretty popular. But yeah, you have Delaware, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. You could even almost put New Hampshire as a safe margin. Republicans don't really have the best candidate here. You could almost also almost put Minnesota as a safe margin. Tina Smith almost won by a safe margin in 2018, and that was with an open seat, not even defeating an incumbent. So as you can see here, we have 43 Democrats and 40 Republicans for these safe states. Now we will fill off the likely lean and tilt states. So we'll start. Uh, we'll start down here, I guess. We can start in the deep south. Alabama will still be a lean margin. Doug Jones is still going to lose in a best case scenario. There's not really much he could have done. Even if he had voted against impeachment and Roy Moore was the nominee, Doug Jones probably still would have lost. The incumbency advantage really isn't much considering that he got less votes than Hillary Clinton did in Alabama and Hillary Clinton lost by 30 points. But in the best case scenario, he could lose by a lean margin, just making it closer, but he'd still end up losing anyway. In Mississippi, you have Mike SB versus Cindy Hyde-Smith, a rematch of last year's, or two years ago, in 2018, the runoff election of Mississippi. That is going to happen, most likely, and if it is best case scenario, Mike SB could bring it down to a likely margin. As for Georgia... The David Perdue seat, the normal seat, would be by lean margin, and the special election seat would be by tilt margin. I can see it going blue if Kelly Loeffler is the nominee, but she is not going to be. It looks like it's going to be Doug Collins at this point. Therefore, I don't really see any chance that the Georgia special election is going to go to the Democrats, but it could be very close, a tilt margin indeed. Also, South Carolina, I think, would be by a likely margin. Lindsey Graham just might lose by, I um, might win by just a little bit less to Jamie Harrison, maybe around eight to nine points, nine to ten points or something. So it's just moving that into the likely margin from the safe margin. Kentucky would be by a lean margin. Mitch McConnell is the most unpopular senator. Arguably, obviously, Susan Collins is pretty unpopular as well. But Mitch McConnell is still pretty unpopular, but as we've seen in elections before, he seems like it's going to be close, and then he ends up pulling away at the end. That's probably what will happen this time, but in the best case scenario for the Democrats, they could bring it down to a lean margin, probably closer than he's ever won before. Going up into the northeast here, I think New Hampshire could easily be by a likely margin in the non in the non best case scenario, but in a best case scenario, it would definitely go by a likely margin. Republicans don't really have a good candidate here. You could see a similar result to what you have with Chris Sununu, the governor, where he's really popular and he gets a really good result despite the state not being too Democratic, too Republican, going either partisan way. And so that's what you might see in terms of the Senate election. Republicans don't really have a candidate either. In terms of the main election, Sarah Gideon could win by lean margin. Sarah Gideon is pretty much an ideal candidate for the state of Maine. They couldn't really have asked for someone better, a woman who is the Speaker of the House of Representatives in Maine, which is going to be a benefit to her regardless. And, and in a best case scenario, that even works better for her. Some polls have shown her up by around four to five points. And if those results hold, 
In a best case scenario, she could easily win by a lean margin. And so as we see right now, Democrats are 45, Republicans are 46. And in Michigan, Gary Peters could easily win by a lean margin as well. I could even put this in a likely margin because Debbie Stabenow now beat John James by seven points in 2018. If Gary Peters runs a good campaign, trounces John James, he could win by a likely margin. But at this point, I'll put it in a lean margin just because of the fact that this state is a Trump state still. But it will be a bit closer, I think, and it will be by a lean margin. Uh, going over here, Iowa, I think will be by tilt margin. Joni Ernst is not that popular, and despite the fact that it is Iowa, like I just said, she is not that popular, so it could get very close, but I don't think Democrats really have a candidate for this seat either, so I can't imagine it getting too close, but it will be a very close state. Minnesota, I think, will be a likely margin. Tina Smith could easily win this by a safe margin. She won by nine points in 2018 in an open seat, despite the fact that that was a midterm. Minnesota is still a blue state, hasn't gone red since 1980. And that's something that you're going to have to watch out for. Um, and yeah, that's likely Minnesota. Going over here to, we're going out here to North Carolina. North Carolina could be a tilt margin to Cal Cunningham, almost a lean margin, probably by 1, 1.8, 1.9 percentage points. Tom Tullis is not a popular person here. And as we've seen, North Carolina has gotten closer in the presidential race. This could just mean that there's less of a chance that Tom Tillis wins. And in a best case scenario, Joe Biden probably wins this state as well, meaning that Cal Cunningham would win this state by a pretty comfortable margin, beating the incumbent Tom Tillis. You also have a governor election here as well. And so that would be my tilt margin to Cal Cunningham. Going down here to Texas, Texas will be my likely margin. You have John Corn in here. I don't really want to put this in a lean margin. Maybe Democrats could get a Beto-style candidate, but I think that's pretty unlikely. And John Corn will probably win by around two to three points more than Trump will. He is more an establishment figure. He is more of a figure that can win by more. He's less polarizing than Ted Cruz was. So even in the best case scenario, he probably wins by around five to six, maybe even six to seven. And going down to these final four states here, we have Arizona, Colorado, Kansas, and Montana, and we are at 48-48. First, this is going to be a surprise to some people, but I think Kansas could go till blue. You have Chris Kobach, the nominee here. He lost by five points in the governor's race, in, despite the fact that it's Kansas. And you also had an independent that got 6.5% of the vote and left-leaning independent, too. And so you could see that many of those independents probably would have gone to the Democratic candidate for the governor. And while governor elections are different, state elections are different from national elections, Chris Kobach is still a very polarizing figure. And Kansas has shown that it can elect Democrats in the past. It's had, Repub it's had Democratic governors for a very long time. And who says they can't elect those people to the Senate like Montana has? And we'll talk about that in a second. But I think that uh, the Democratic candidate, I think it's a state senator running, could narrowly poll a victory off against Chris Kobach, assuming he is the nominee. And then finally, to put the Democrats at 50, I think Montana could also be by tilt margin. You have Steve Bullock running here against the incumbent Steve Daines. Now, Steve Bullock is actually more popular as a governor than Steve Daines is as a senator. And with John Tester's win in 2018, Democrats have proved they can actually win national politics here. And now you have a governor running here, and despite the fact that it is a presidential year. It's not a blue wave year anymore. Steve Bullock could easily win this race, even in a non-special, even in a non-best case scenario. And I think that that's something that we're going to have to watch out for. But in a best case scenario, I think that Steve Bullock does win the Senate race. And yeah, so going down here to Colorado, John Hickenlooper would probably win by a likely margin. Colorado is a state that's been trending blue for quite a long time. Uh, you, and he is the governor of the state, the former governor of the state. I think he could easily win this seat against Cory Gardner, who's been allied with Trump most of his time, win the Trump presidency. And yes, that's that's 51 now. And then the final seat, Arizona. I think Arizona could be my lean margin. Martha McSally already lost her seat, and now she's going up against a guy, Mark Kelly. His wife is in Congress. He is less modern on gun control, which could harm him, lose him some voters, but he is an astronaut as well, which I assume will help him. And Arizona is a state that's been trending. No matter how much you want to argue it, it has been trending. And Martha McSally is in trouble in this place. And she's never actually won many elections here. She lost the House of Representatives election in 2012. She was in the House of Representatives before, and she lost the Senate race. But yet she was appointed to the to the old seat of uh, Jeff Flake. And so while she is running again, I think that there's actually quite a small chance she'll win 
even in a non-best case scenario, but in a best case scenario in a trending state against a pretty good candidate when she's never won herself, I think that she loses by a lean margin. So looking at the map overall, you can see the Democrats have 52 seats, Republicans have 48 seats. Uh, this will give Democrats a majority, quite a substantial majority too, getting a net gain of five seats, and this would be a very good result for them. But yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as always. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, and I will see you guys later.